You're listening to the Harmonizing Her podcast, where ambition finds its perfect rhythm. The show for the multifaceted, multi-passionate woman who's ready to harmonize all parts of herself. Let's get right into today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Harmonizing Her podcast. In this week's episode, we're diving into what I would consider my five non-negotiables for high-performing women who wear multiple hats on any given day and you're holding a lot and you're multifaceted. Oftentimes, we get asked, how do you do it all, right? And so today, I'm going to break down the five things that help me do it all. This first non-negotiable is one that not everybody is going to like, but it's truly one that everybody needs to hear. And that is big visions require big rest, which makes my number one non-negotiable at all times, making sure that I'm making time to rest and recharge. Now, if you've been here for a minute, especially if you're in one of my programs, you know that one of my core values, my North Star, my mission, my belief system is that well-nourished, overflowing women change the world. Because when we are so full and we have all that access, we have so much to give, we show up better for our family, we show up better for our clients, we show up better for our business, we show up better for ourselves, and it just genuinely makes the world a better place. Even in fuller or busier seasons of life and business, I always is prioritize my sleep. I have a little nightly ritual where I take my magnesium drink and I put on my red light and I take some melatonin and I make sure that I am getting high quality sleep every single night or at least as much as possible. And so if you're one of those people who powers through late night work sessions and you stay up till one, two in the morning trying to just finish the thing, finish the project, get the job done, you wake up exhausted, that carries into the next day, you're groggy, you're not clear, you don't have access to your intuition like you would do if you recharged your cup, and that's just going to continue to spill into the next day, into the next day, into the next day. If you're someone who scrolls on TikTok until midnight, which that one is personally my vice. I am not like a late night work girly, um, but sometimes I get trapped in the TikTok rabbit hole. And so just being really mindful of what are the patterns that are playing out in my nightly routine that might be preventing me from getting true quality, consistent, sustainable rest, which is going to catapult me further and faster every single day that I prioritize that. The bigger the vision, the bigger the dream, the bigger the revenue, the bigger the business, the bigger you need to rest. That brings me to non-negotiable number two, which is body movement every day. Over the last few years especially, I've massively changed my own relationship with exercise and working out where it's no longer a means to an end. I think anytime you pursue anything as a means to an end, you're never going to get the result that you really want. And working out for me, especially as a teenager, it was a means to an end to lose weight, to drop a pant size, to appear or feel skinnier, whatever the fuck that even means. And so it was always as a form of punishment. And as I got older, and especially as I became a mom, and as I healed so many things around my own body and got really clear on what my true values are, I use exercise for two things nowadays, and neither one of them has to do at all with my appearance. I use exercise and body movement as a way to charge my own batteries. Every single day I wake up and I look at my two-year-old who has his own little set of like foam dumbbells and I say to him, are you ready to work out? And every morning he says, oh yeah. And every single morning I remind him we work out and we move our body to create energy, buddy. Do you want to create energy today? He's like, oh yeah. Um, And just really like instilling that moving your body is like a natural free way to charge your own batteries and to create energy. And so anytime that I'm feeling like sluggish or I'm trying to get tapped into my creativity or the energy is just feeling stagnant around a project, I know that the tool in my toolkit that I'm going to use is my body and moving my body. And that can look 
so many different ways. You can do hit exercises, you can do yoga, Pilates, you can go for a walk, you can dance, you can stretch. You can, there's so many ways. There's not one right way. The best way and the most correct way is just to do it and to find the way where you can move your body in a consistent and sustainable way. And the second thing is I use body movement as a spiritual practice because anytime things are feeling hard or sticky or I'm feeling resistance come up or I'm like sitting down trying to write something, trying to create something and I'm just feeling this wall where that flow is not present, I think there's a big nuance here when you have the discernment you can tap into that feeling of like i'm trying really hard and it is not coming out and it is not feeling natural it is not feeling effortless it is not feeling intuitive it is not feeling fun there's going to be one group of people at this fork in the road that just push through they push through it they they get done what they can they produce something and pretty much every single time it's not going to be their best work. It's not going to be the best result and it's not going to carry the most potent and highest energy that it possibly could. And not only is this group of people going to produce something that isn't even their best work, it is going to take them like four times the amount of time to do it because they're not connected in that state of flow. They're not tapped into their body or their intuition and they're just pushing through with their mind. But our mind can literally only get us so far because it's our body and our soul that holds all the wisdom. And so I use exercise as a way to get the fuck out of my mind and drop into my body and just to tune out the logic and tune out the tune out the temptation to problem solve and just connect with my internal navigation system, as I like to call it, which is my body wisdom and my intuition and really connecting to the body and getting out of the head. And that to me is everything. That to me is absolutely a non-negotiable. Prioritizing good rest and consistent body movement alone, those two things compounded over time will change your life. And we're not even halfway through this list yet. Okay, this third one might be a little controversial because I talk to so many of my clients and they're like, I don't really know what my hobbies are. I don't really know what I do for fun. I love my business. My business has always kind of been my hobby. My business has always been my creative outlet. And listen, I have been there too. There was a point in my life when I was first starting my business where I was just so consumed in the best way possible. I was obsessed. I just wanted to create. I wanted to grow things. And that was really my hobby. I would work my day job. And then in my evenings, I would build my landing pages and write copy and content and all the things. And so it's very easy, especially in the beginning and the building phases, for it to feel like your business is your hobby. But I think it is so fucking important to have hobbies and passions and creative outlets that have nothing to do with your business that you don't monetize. This is going to look so different for every single person. And if you're listening to this and you're like, well, shit, I don't really even know where to start. Like, what's a hobby? How do I find a hobby? I think it's easy to overcomplicate it, right? Like, reading could be a hobby. Exercise could be a hobby. For me, a big creative outlet is my clothing and my closet and my makeup and my hair and my perfumes. And I've said a million times, like I am the girly girl. And so that is such a creative outlet for me to get up and say like, what character am I channeling today and go through my closet and look at the textures and the pieces and the jewelry and all those things. That to me is a hobby. That to me is where I get to really just feel into my creativity in a way that's not getting channeled into my Instagram content or into a new program, but just for the sake of feeling good and feeling creative and feeling satisfied. It could be painting, it could be pottery, it could be horseback riding, it could be ice skating. I mean, there's so many things. And if you're like, I don't really know, go try some. Try different things on, see what you like, and just like anything else, once you bring the experience into your body, you're going to have that clarity. Okay, the fourth non-negotiable is one that I 
personally have mastered and that is creating spaciousness in your life in your business in your calendar it is absolutely vital for creative women high performing women mothers ceos space holders coaches leaders to have white space built into their life so they can give their own inspiration creativity ideas downloads the breathing room that they need whenever i'm talking about spaciousness i always draw the metaphor of redecorating your office let's say right now you are just giving your home office the biggest makeover it's ever seen and we're talking new paint new furniture new carpeting new light fixtures new everything okay you ordered all of your dream furniture and it got dropped off and it is in boxes and it is sitting outside of your office right now just waiting to be let in. And the problem is you haven't made the space for it. You've just been trying to override it rather than clear out the space for the new furniture to come in. And so if you have all your old furniture sitting in your office, you try to bring the new furniture in, it's not gonna work, right? How are you gonna put your new desk where your old desk is still standing? We need to make space. We can't just stack one desk on top of each other. It doesn't make sense. And it's the same concept, especially when those like big, beautiful, sacred, divine downloads come in. Sometimes we get a glimpse or like a crumb that leads us to continue to follow the path and unravel and uncover the thing that's coming through. The problem is if we don't have the space to get curious and go down that rabbit hole and just let the idea breathe and have space to do that, a lot of the times the idea is just gonna come in and come out faster than you could even grab onto it. So the problem isn't that you're not intuitive or you're not connected or you don't have the downloads coming through. You totally do. They're outside your door. Your office furniture is here already outside your door waiting for you to create space for it to fully drop in and integrate. This is just like a side story, but I think it's worth telling and inserting here. White space doesn't mean like hours and hours of doing nothing every single day. I am at the time I'm recording this getting ready for a launch and it was just like a really full week and there were two things that I prioritized during that week that was fuller and busier than normal my sleep and my body movement. So those two things, they checked out, we were able to do that, but I found myself not having as much space as I normally do. And so my body was just like nudging me to take a bath. That was the download that I was getting, like take a bath, take a bath, take a bath. And in my mind, like all the resistance would come up. This was like happening three, four nights in a row. I was like, oh, I don't have my bath salts. I don't really feel like getting wet. I'm just so tired. I don't like, I was just making it this huge mind drama unnecessarily. And it was like the fourth night where I was like, oh, I think I want to take a bath, but I don't know. And my husband was like, get your ass in the bathroom, run the water, get your red light and just take a bath and I was like okay okay I will because I've been getting the nudge the breadcrumb the breadcrumb is take a bath it's really easy to overlook that and be like no I'm too tired the bath isn't going to lead me to some legendary idea but those are the breadcrumbs that's the the body connection that like kind of going backwards now but like once you connect to the body and you're moving the body and you're dropping into your body regularly those cues are going to be so much easier for you to pick up on and hear and recognize so right away i knew the prompt to take a bath was coming from my intuition and my mind just kept putting it off so long story short I get in the bath and I have a red light timer that goes off for 15 minutes. And so this is like less than a 15 minute <laughs> situation. And I'm in the bath and I just settle in and I just let my body relax and I just connect to myself and disconnect to everything else and download. The name of your masterclass needs to change. It needs to be this. This is why you haven't stumbled across this name. This is why the resistance is coming up. Like it was this big fucking massive breakthrough of like, here's a really important pivot that you need to make during your launch. This is the title that you're going to use. I automatically was like feeling some resistance coming up to it. My body intuition, God, whatever you call it was like, 
this is why you're feeling this way. This is why it's a breakthrough. This is what you have to process and see it. I was like, oh my God, like for days, my body's like, hey, I have something to tell you. The furniture is here. Like, let me in, give me space to come through. And because I had a fuller week than normal, it wasn't coming through. And so, like I said, my body was like, hello, hello, answer the door. I'm ignoring the knock. It's not that the knock isn't there. It's not that the idea and the clarity isn't there. It's that I was ignoring it. And that's what happens to so many of us so often. And that is why spaciousness and creating space in your schedule and having white space is so important. Okay, and the fifth and final non-negotiable for high-performing women who are wearing multiple hats and harmonizing multiple things is investing in yourself. The thing about investing in yourself is it requires a time value analysis because, take out because, wealthy people fiercely protect their time. And so if it comes down to potentially going down a rabbit hole and figuring something out that you could figure out and it might take you three hours to figure it out, but you totally could versus investing someone who can do it for you in 30 minutes, that's the time value exchange to say, could I figure this out in the three hours that it would take me and DIY it? Totally. But if I was saving those three hours, where could I better direct them to move my life and business forward? And it's probably not the things that are caught in those tasks that are outside of your zone of genius. And so anytime I see an opportunity for me to save time, I am all like, put my money where my mouth is, sign me up, here's my credit card, let's go, because I know how valuable my time is and how to direct it into things that are actually going to grow the business, not getting lost in busy work, not having shiny object syndrome, not getting lost down rabbit holes where I'm like, what am I even doing when I could ask somebody else for help and they could help me so easily, so effortlessly because it's their zone of genius. Whether that be a software that's going to make my life easier or even save my team more time and make their easier, make their life easier, I'm all for it. If there is a mentor or a coach out there who has been where I'm trying to go and embodied in the same values who I know can help me collapse time, I'm going to sign up with them. If there is a course or a program that is giving me a proven process or framework so I don't have to figure it out and DIY and hope for the best, I'm going to buy that program. Because at the end of the day, in any situation, it is going to cost me more to try to figure it out myself versus what it actually costs financially to invest in the program. And I always draw the example back to my five figure flow program. It is my proven launch process that we have been perfecting and testing and refining for over five years. It is the same strategy I started my business with. It is the strategy I scaled my business with. It has helped so many of my clients over $4 million in client revenue. This is a proven process. This is something you can plug into your business and it's going to work. Depending on when you come into the program, sometimes we do like an early bird, you can get it for $1,500. Otherwise, it's just under $2,000 to invest. And so if I'm looking at someone who's like, I've seen launches, I don't intimately understand the strategy behind them, or I'm having a hard time pinpointing what's working, what's not working. I keep trying all these things, but I'm not really getting the story the data is telling me. I'm not feeling clear on what to do next. I'm, I'm having a hard time pinpointing the thing to double down on. To me, it's like figuring that out yourself is going to take you so much time. It's going to take you so much guesswork. It's probably going to feel really overwhelming and draining to not have that clarity and just to be constantly throwing spaghetti against the wall, hoping something sticks, really just operating out of guesswork when you know that's not the way that you want to lead your business and drive your sales process. So let's say that you attempt to master the art of launching and just keep doing it the same way you've always done it. You're consuming free content and you're watching videos and you're hoping for the best. And over the course of 12 months, you've had a couple launches, but you're still left in the same place. You're still left in the same place spinning your wheels. Or you invest 
1500 bucks or $2,000 and you get the entire process, the entire framework, every template, every resource, every piece of copy, everything you would need to help you save time, make money and do so in a way that is no stress, no guesswork. I don't know about you, but I'm going to spend the $2,000 all day long rather than wasting months or years of my life trying to figure it out. So revisiting the question that we opened this episode with, how do you do it all? Well, first of all, I don't do it all alone. I have a lot of support. I have a lot of help. I refuse to do it all myself because I know that's not sustainable. I know that's not the fastest way to grow. And I know it's not the easiest way to grow either. So investing in yourself is a non-negotiable. All five of these things compounded over time is going to change your life. So I hope you loved this episode. would love to hear what you thought and I will see you next week. That's a wrap for this week's episode. As always, I'm your host, Taylor Slango, and it's my mission for this show to be a catalyst that empowers you to break free from all the boxes and stop trying to niche down who you are. Make sure to stay connected by subscribing to the show, going to taylorslango.com forward slash podcast to join the free Harmonize Weekly newsletter and connecting with me on Instagram at taylorslango. 